So let's get some analysis from Professor Nelson Lichtenstein from the University of California out in Santa Barbara. He's a labor expert and has written two books about Walmart, including The Retail Revolution, How Walmart Created a Brave New World of Business. Professor Lichtenstein's joining us by phone out in California. Good morning to you, Professor. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Um, it, well, it, it's very relevant. You're a labor expert because as, as the world's biggest retailer and a big employer, Walmart has had many battles with unions. In any way, does this smaller scale store help them bypass some of the barriers to accessing urban markets? Well, and, yes, it, it will probably. I mean, one of the part of the objection to going into the big urban urban areas has been well, these huge super super centers have environmental and traffic and uh, all sorts of problems of that sort. So the kind of a coalition of the unions and environmentalists and you know planning people have, uh, and of course also the other stores that are already there have opposed uh, Walmart. And so the, the smaller stores at least eliminate some of those problems uh, that uh, you know that the big super centers. How I, I think the this little stores are designed, by the way, to compete directly with the dollar stores, the dollar value, dollar general, um, th those stores which have been, uh, they're, 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 they're proliferating, they're, they're, they even undercut Walmart on price, they're, they're very, uh, people, uh, they're designed for people who can't, don't even own a car, they're, they're in strip malls and things, and they've been uh, eating away at Walmart's growth from the bottom uh, of the, uh, you know, of the income, income area. So I think that's part of the uh, reason for those small stores. Professor, this is Scarlett Fu. Uh, Walmart depends on the big box concept for about three quarters of all of its U.S. locations. I wonder, when we talk about these building permits to create these smaller stores, what took the company so long to diversify from that supermodel concept? Well, the supermodel is very, very efficient. And if you're sort of looking at sort of the middle or lower middle uh, 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 Physicians, consumer who drive drive there with a car and maybe spend a hundred to two hundred dollars, it works. But uh, but with the price of gas being high, with the recession lingering, uh, and and with a, a huge a sort of kind of underclass that exists in America, I mean they're they're you know they don't work there or have or just have part time uh, jobs. These smaller stores, which are which are you know dollars, things would be a dollar in these smaller stores. I mean there's this market there that Walmart has to try to tap. Uh, it hasn't worked in the past, by the way. They've had these smaller stores around. They haven't worked. And apparently, and Tesco tried it in Los Angeles, and apparently their effort ha isn't, isn't being uh, a, a big success either. So it's, right. uh, it's problematical whether this is going to actually work. Right. I, uh, Tesco was trying to go over, uh, go after um, a little bit of a higher-end customer yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, but, but you've been writing extensively about Walmart's uh, problematic relationships with unions. Oh, and right. I, I know we've seen some headway be being made in terms of Chicago and access to that market. Are we going to see them tap these urban markets more? In your essay, I'm looking 20% of the nation's buying powers in the biggest cities. Yes, and a piece I have coming out in American Prospect, uh, I, I showed that, uh, that the Walmart has shifted its, its strategy uh, to the, well, we could call it slightly to the left. What they, they cut a deal with the building trades in Chicago and New York and probably other big cities in which they said, okay, we'll build, we'll build the super centers anyway, and maybe the other stores as well, uh, with union labor. We'll build the stores with union labor, which is which they hadn't agreed to do before mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a large way, kind of a, a project labor agreement. They, they've agreed to do that. They, they have, have not agreed in any way, shape, or form to, uh, to deal with the unions when it comes to staffing the store. Uh, they've also, of course, made lots of um, sort of uh, more than gestures. They, they, they've agreed to uh, various kinds of environmental um, um, regulation, and they themselves are pushing uh, sustainability in their entire supply chain, which has gotten a lot of applause from environmentalists. So they've, in right. effect, tried to split the coalition that was against them. Uh, it, it, it's a fascinating thing to watch. They're one of the biggest employers in this country, if not the biggest private one. Uh, so fascinating progress. Thank you so much, Professor, for giving us your analysis.